Welcome Opal's users. In this short tutorial, we will cover the use of the barcode range assignment in tables. This tool is a way to manage barcode ranges sometimes used within a library or when purchasing pre-processed resources from a vendor. Libraries that purchase pre-processed resources need to keep track of reserved vendor ranges as well as those barcodes that each vendor has used within those ranges. In addition, some libraries use specific prefixes and number ranges to barcode different resource types. This utility enables you to manage and keep track of all these variations. We will access the Barcode Range and Assignment Table tool by clicking the Administration tab and choosing Reports and Tools. In the Tools section, you will choose the Barcode Range Assignment and Tables. We are now in the tool and will set up a basic range for general library items. Please note that the library has already set up a range for purchases from Follett Books, with a prefix specific to Follett. This prefix distinguishes this range from other vendors, which will ensure no duplication of barcodes with other vendors I may add to the table. I will type in the name of the library and set up the barcode range. First, I will type in my library name. I will use items at the end of the library name to denote that this range can be used for all in-house cataloged items. Please note that you can, of course, set up more ranges with different prefixes as needed for varied item types. This is not required, but some libraries choose to do so. Now I will type the prefix that will be used for in-house cataloged items. I will use an acronym based upon the name of the library for this range of general library materials. In this case, I will use TOLC for the OPALS Library Center. I will next add the numeric range of FROM and TO. I will start with the number 3000 in the FROM section and will add 5000 in the range TO section. Counting the four-letter prefix and the four-digit number, I will then have a figure to add into the barcode length. The barcode length is 8. I have filled out the form and will now save this range by clicking Add New towards the bottom of the screen in the center and add another range that will represent a vendor that pre-processes items purchased. I will add the vendor name Gumdrop Books and then add the prefix for the range assigned to this vendor. In this case, I will use GDB as a prefix for Gumdrop Books. I will now add the From and To barcode number range. I will assign a range that can allow room for purchases over, say, the next year. This range can always be edited and extended. Finally, I will add in the barcode length, which is the number of digits in the prefix, along with the number of digits in the number sequence. We have a three-letter prefix and a four-digit number, so the barcode length will equal seven. I will now save this newly added barcode range by clicking the Add New button just below the Range Setup window. Now I will catalog a couple of items using Z-Import to illustrate the use of the barcode assignment and table tool. Going to the Z-Import tool, I will search for an item to be cataloged. Scanning in the ISBN number, we have found the book and will click the title on the far left to open up the bibliographic and holding record. For this tutorial, I will ignore the bibliographic record and go straight to the holding record to add in a barcode. Please note that it is a good idea to always examine your bib record and edit accordingly, perhaps adding more access points such as subject headings, a summary, or a series title. 
I have clicked the Holdings tab and am in the Holdings portion of the record. I will go to the 852 subfield P and click in the white space to the right of the subfield designator. This will bring up the barcode selector. This will not be a manual entry as we have set up a range for in-house cataloged items. I will click the down arrow to pull up our newly created range for the Opal's Library Center items. Once we choose this range, you will see that the system provides a barcode to be used. Each time you catalog an item, the system will bring up the next available barcode. We see that our first barcode to be used from our new range is TOLC 3000. I will click OK, which will take me back to the holding record. We are back at the holding record and see that the barcode is in the 852 subfield P of the record. I will go to the menu to the right and click Save and Exit. This will bring us back to the Z Import screen to catalog another item. We are at the Z Import screen and I will scan in an ISBN number to pull up our next item to be cataloged. I will click on the title to the far left and bring up the bib and holding record. A good way to distinguish the bib record from the holding record is to think of the holdings record as that which represents what you are holding in your hand. This item will have its own unique barcode, price, call number, and the like. I will click the white area to the right of the 852 subfield P and the barcode selector will come up. Because we have used it before in this session, it defaults to the TOLC range and provides the next number available from our defined range. Clicking OK will bring us back to the record where we can then save the record. I will just click Save this time around and will go to the barcode range assignment and table to see the changes that have taken place within our range. We see that our newly created range has two barcodes showing as used and we also see that the available barcodes has changed as well, noting the fact that we have used two barcodes from this range. Our two items have been cataloged using our barcode range for in-house cataloged items. For further assistance, go to the help site at help.opalsinfo.net. Once you are in the help site, you can choose tools at the top and bring up documentation for the barcode range assignment and table. I hope that this short clip has been helpful and will enable your library to keep track of ranges for in-house items and vendors you may use for purchases.